Hi, it's Nicole, and today it's going to be kind of a scrappy video because I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing here, but I had some thoughts the other night when I was making pea soup and dumplings, which is a typical Bahamian meal, and I didn't think at the time to record my making that meal, so I might, like, I don't know, talk through the recipe at the, at the end of this, maybe put some illustrations or something um, to explain it a bit. Uh, I do have a photo that I took of it though. Yeah, I had some thoughts when I was cooking about how I could and should have been through this month sharing a little bit more about Bahamian culture and um, I was thinking about how we don't really have um, a movie industry like that like other places do and I feel like whatever is there is highly influenced by outside forces but I was thinking of other ways to talk about Bahamian culture and one of those things is for example music. We have um, something called soca and another genre called rake and scrape which are very um tied into our culture and if you can find any of that kind of music to have a listen to uh please do but other than that it occurred to me actually uh i should probably be a little less um shy or like downplaying of the fact that i'm also a bahamian creator um i'm an illustrator at this point i've illustrated about 15 books that are published and a few more that are being published. I'll put some of those um, covers up on the screen now and I'll put a list of those books um, in the description box. They're mostly kids books um, going from like picture books all the way to middle grade um, but yeah I feel like I should probably give myself a legitimate shout out on my channel in this month which is both um, the month that we're exploring Bahamas for the Invisible Cities project and it's um, Caribbean reading month so yeah it just makes sense doesn't it um, other than those books that I've illustrated for though I have also written and illustrated this book <laughs> um, which was published by a small press called Short Box it's no longer published there it's out of print and I have the last issues. Um, I don't have my shop running right now because I find running a shop kind of a bit <laughs> of a... it takes a lot um, to do behind the scenes and so I haven't really... like I've just put that offline for now but I actually do still have copies of this. I don't know if you want to let me know if you want to buy one. <laughs> I don't know, this feels weird. But the comic was actually nominated for an Eisner Award which is kind of like the Oscars of comics which blew my mind quite frankly um, and it was my first sort of long form um, comic that I'd done really and it sort of helped launch a lot of what I'm doing now. <laughs> that feels worth mentioning and it feels like I should probably shout it out a little bit more loudly and confidently um, in case people in case people want to check that out. Uh, other than that though I have read the first story in Luska and I really liked it. I would say the difference between Luska and An Evening in Guanima already are that An Evening in Guanima is more set on recording uh, folklore uh, specific tales that kind of already exist I think whereas this is the author's sort of um, done her own thing I guess a bit more using some of the folklore elements. You could say this is an unofficial folklore exploration I guess whereas the other one is a little bit more um, stories that people might already be familiar with and this is um, uh, more from the author. Like more from the author's mind. But I liked it. I liked the first story. I had one um, tiny tiny issue uh, with something there but I'll talk about that in the wrap up. So yeah, like I said, I made this dish um, the other night and it's something that I do every so often so I didn't even think, oh maybe I should film this because it's not like an event for me, it's just another another night in my house. <laughs> and I did actually think at the beginning of the month that I should walk through a recipe at some point. But here we are. So some caveats I guess. This, like all meals, is one of those things where everybody um, in the Bahamas I guess will have their own way of doing it and this is just me and my mum's way of doing this and my version is also vegan but I think if you're not vegan or if you want to try 
a non-vegan version of this Bahamian meal that's still authentic. You can add bits of chicken or I feel like probably pork or something, maybe, but I've never been in like a pork heavy family, so I don't know. It just feels like it might be sort of authentic, but chicken I think is legit. <laughs> Basically what we want to do, we get our ingredients, which are, and it's a very simple recipe, a small onion, some tomato paste, beans of your choice. In general, I go for black-eyed peas, black-eyed beans, um, red kidney beans, or butter beans, lima beans. Um, lima beans being my favorite. Uh, sweet potato or carrots. I prefer sweet potato to carrots, but you can do carrots if you prefer that. Thyme, salt, flour, baking powder, and some water. Oh, that's another thing. Measurements are kind of, hmm. We need a little bit of olive oil in your pot, then you want to chop some onions, put the onions in there. We're going to put two tablespoons of tomato paste in there, not tomato sauce, tomato paste. Um, you know, kind of mix that around a little bit till the onions start getting translucent while that's happening, or maybe preferably before because this is a new recipe that you're doing, I guess. Um, peel the sweet potatoes or carrots and chop them into like bite-sized pieces. Then we're going to put those in with the onions and tomato paste. Then we want to open our can of beans, whichever beans we've chosen, and just chuck them all in there. At this point I would usually just kind of fill the can, the empty can of beans, with some water and then put maybe two handfuls of water in there. The reason we're using the empty can is because you get more of the like beans flavor and stuff from inside the can into the soup. We're gonna add about half a teaspoon of salt. You can add more if you want. I tend to like things to be a little low salt but I think more flavor, more salt is probably what a lot of other people will do. I personally, for health reasons, prefer to try to keep salt down. Then we add one teaspoon of thyme. We're gonna put that on a medium heat and cover. And then we're going to do some dumplings. So in a separate bowl, put one cup of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and then, hmm, this is the hard bit, uh, then you wanna put maybe about half a cup to three quarter cup of water in there. It, you mixing that all up and and it needs to form sort of a a gloop kind of like it it needs to be not runny liquid but it needs to be not super solid basically um so it's kind of gloopy um and we're like mixing that really well then we're going to check on our soup pot maybe stick a fork or something into one of the potatoes. Once they're kind of feel like they're softish and you can like stick a, a fork comfortably in there, then you're going to pour the flour mixture, just like enough that like one, the amount of one dumplings worth of the flour is in the pot. And then you pour a second one and then a third one and then a fourth one does that make sense hopefully and so you have four little dumplings um, if you can get more that's great sometimes I get six out of that and you cover the pot again with them they're inside the soup now cover the pot uh, leave that for like five minutes um, come back and then with a wooden spoon you want to turn each of them over so that the underside no so that the top side is now in the soup properly. Uh, at this point, you can maybe take a little taste of the soup, see if it has enough saltiness for you, see if you like that flavor, um, and then leave that for, I don't know, another five minutes. I mean, at this point, I would probably even turn the stove off to save heat, um, and just because the soup will still be hot and doing its thing, so it'll still be like cooking the underside of the dumplings. Uh, and they're pretty much done at this point anyway. 
um, and then after about five minutes you can dish that up into two separate bowls and you're done. Voila. But I hope that you appreciated that I made an effort here at least um, and I hope that that was clear. Uh, Anyway, that's all I have for now, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.